The producers and distributors of Tech AV technical training programs welcome you to this series of instructional lessons on the subject of mechanical threaded fasteners. This is program number one, which will introduce you to the subject of fasteners by way of identifying those types most usually used in general mechanical industries. If you take a close look at vehicles, machinery and equipment on your plant or in your factory, you will see that many of the parts are joined together and held securely through the use of threaded fasteners. During times of maintenance and repair operations, these fasteners may be removed so that the artisan can do work to the various components or parts either in or on the equipment. Many of the fasteners that were removed after an inspection may be replaced and re-secured into their original positions during the reassembly operation. An artisan must be able to identify and correctly select new fasteners when replacements are necessary. The artisan has learned how to do all these things because he was trained and has had some years of experience. And we are going to begin our learning right now as we first take a look at the types of threaded fasteners commonly used in the field of mechanical engineering. One of the most common types is the bolt. Along with a the bolt, there will always be its matching nut. You will find bolts and nuts in many places, especially where a join is made in, for example, pipe work. Some pieces of equipment, such as this centrifugal pump, are totally secured with bolts and nuts. Couplings between motors and driven assemblies often use bolts and nuts. A typical bolt consists of a head, which is usually shaped in this manner, which we call a hexagon. A hexagon is a six-sided shape. Below the head is the shank, which is a cylindrical shaped section. These are the threads, basically a spiral groove that has been cut into the shank. A bolt always has a non-threaded portion of shank known as the plane section. A nut containing matching threads and also of hexagon shape engages the bolt's threads when turned onto the threaded section, as demonstrated. Our next type is much like a bolt, but notice that threads are cut for the whole length of the shank. Such a fastener is known as a set screw. Set screws are designed to be used directly into pre-threaded holes, usually in a major component such as this gear reduction housing. Both the bolt and the set screw types we've seen have hexagon shaped heads. Artisans often call these hex bolts or hex screws. A hexagon has six flat sides or flats. A very common fastener type is this, known as a cap screw. As you can see, it has a round shaped head, but is otherwise the same as a set screw. Inside the cap screw's head is a recess or socket which provides access for the tool needed to turn the screw. You will find cap screws used commonly in areas where space is limited, where a hexagon head is too big to allow room to turn or to fit a regular type of spanner. Some components need to be compact. Here, a cap screw fits neatly into a recess within this hydraulic pump unit. The next common fastener type we shall look at is the stud. Studs are basically headless bolts consisting of a shank, a plain center section and threads at each end. You may see that one threaded section is shorter than the other. The short threads are used, like set screws, to thread the stud into the main component. The stud is secured firmly and the component placed over the studs as demonstrated. Once in position, the component is secured using nuts. 
The fasteners we have so far looked at all require the use of spanners for purposes of tightening or loosening. Smaller fasteners, which we call machine screws, are usually turned using screwdrivers. Machine screws are commonly used to secure light duty parts or components together and can be obtained in a variety of head shapes. Machine screws usually have either straight slotted heads for regular flat bladed screwdrivers to fit and turn them or Phillips slots where the use of a Phillips screwdriver is necessary. We now look at these fasteners called self-tapping screws. Self-tapping screws do not require threaded holes. A hole is drilled into the work and the screw literally cuts its own thread as it is turned into the job. It must be noted that these fasteners are only suitable for use on sheet metal up to three millimeters in thickness. Like machine screws, self-tapping screws are also available in a variety of different head shapes and screw slots. You will no doubt come across other fastener types as time goes by. One fastener you'll soon get to see is the carriage bolt, which is used in a lot of industries. The tool rest of this grinding machine is secured with a carriage bolt. Note how the square shank engages the square hole in the support bracket. No discussion on fasteners would be complete without considering some of the types of nuts we'll come across. The most basic form of nut is the standard nut or hex nut. The size or thickness of a standard nut is approximately that of the bolt threaded diameter. If one looks carefully at a standard hex nut you will notice that it is chamfered on both its outer edges. By comparison, this machined nut is chamfered only on one edge. The opposite side has been machined flat. Another name for this type is a shouldered nut. A machined nut may only be fitted in such a manner that the machined face is against the surface being secured. Here we have two common nuts, namely a slotted nut and a castellated nut. They perform similar functions. Used mainly on rotating components, slotted nuts are prevented from loosening with split pins. Once the nut has been secured and positioned over a drilling through the fastener, the split pin is passed through and the ends bent to prevent the pin from flying out. Slotted nuts are commonly used in the aircraft industry to provide an extra element of safety. Next, we see nuts which are generally known as cap nuts. Note how these nuts are closed at one end. Cap nuts are generally used to cover the ends of protruding threads and are sometimes placed to improve appearance. The last type of nut we'll look at is the so-called nylon lock nut. These special nuts have a plastic or nylon insert seated within the raised portion as displayed here. When positioned and secured, the nylon insert effectively creates a high resistance to loosening and thus ensures that the nut will not work itself loose during operation. Nylon insert nuts are commonly used on hubs and wheels, such as on this aircraft wheel. We have now looked at a large selection of typical fasteners. There are several more varieties but we feel that you have been introduced to the majority that you'll come across. After the break, we'll discuss some basic accessories used together with threaded fasteners.